The All Progressive Congress in River State has ruled out the adoption of a sole candidate to fly the flag of the party in 2023's governorship elections in the state, noting that the party would get its candidate from a free and fair credible primary. This was a party, uh, this was as the party commenced moves to reconcile the aggrieved members to strengthen the APC to win elections come 2023. Well, joining us to discuss this further is former member of the State House of Assembly, Gordon Choma, and former caretaker committee chairman of the All Progressive Congress in River State, Isaac Abbott Ogbobula. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, Mr. Ogbobula, I think you need to unmute yourself so we can hear you. Mr. Choma, can you hear me? I'm not. I'm not muted at all. Okay, great. I can hear you now. All right, good. Uh, I'm going to start with you, um, uh, Mr. Bobola. I mean, uh, Mr. Mika Bake was um, quoted to say that there is a level of playing field, a uh, level playing field now for every single person in the party, whether they be in a faction or not. Um, he said that it's open to every and anyone. Um, anybody who wants to be anything in the party can be whatever they want. Um, what do you think he uh, meant by this and what necessitated this move because we have known the there to be cracks in the party since 2019 and even before then and here we are in 2022 it seems like um there's some light at the end of the tunnel so what necessitated this okay well, thank you even though um i don't know your name what's the name marianne okay marianne thank you um APC is one in the whole country, Nigeria, River State, and other chapters. The policy is one. Um, election or primaries related issues are just one. One policy, one everywhere. So the policy of APC, irrespective of what uh, uh, any other person has said, is that there must be a uh, level playing field for every member. Emphasis is on member. every registered member of the party uh, to contest whatever position uh, that is possibly zoned if the zoning formula is what you're working with zoned to your side and all that even when it's not zoned to your side sometimes people still brace it and try to contest for positions that are not zoned to their side but the important thing is that every member of the party uh, has a level playing field and uh, to contest whatever position that the person is qualified to contest according to the constitution and the guidelines was any um, particular and special, uh, specific uh, context, whether it's internal or external, whether it's general election or internal party um, structures, the chairmanship at the national to uh, the world's uh, ESCO members. Hmm. It's one policy. I mean, Mr. Mika Beke also talked about fair, credible primaries. Uh, uh, but I want to ha uh, ask, uh, the, the, the fact that he's talking about this idea now or has come to say that, look, we want to bring everybody to the table. Um, have all the factions and the cracks, I mean, I know you're being diplomatic saying the APC is one. Nobody's saying the APC is two. But then we have seen the APC lose elections because of the divisions within the party in 2019. We've seen parallel primaries happen um, parallel congresses uh, happen in your in, in your state, and now he's saying that there's going to be free fair primaries. So I'm asking, have all the cracks in the party been sealed? Have all the warring factions or the disagreeing factions been brought to the table to have a conversation? Mr. Wobula, can um, you hear me? I'm not spokesperson. Yes, I'm. I'm can you hear me? Yes. I'm certainly not for uh, Chief Emeka Beke, the current uh, uh, chairman of the state party, chairman of the, uh, the chairman of the party in the state. I'm certainly not a spokesperson for him. But if I if if I go by the general principles and uh, the policy of it, then I can tell you that there will be level playing field for every member of the party, and that's policy that uh, I, I inherited and that's the policy that I've left behind and I'm sure that is continuously and continually the policy of the party. 
level playing field, irrespective of who you are. So long as you are right, a party member, you have a level playing field for any uh, contest at all that parties involved in. Unfortunately, we, uh, I think I've lost Golden Choma because I was going to ask him um, the question that I just asked you, but you still haven't answered me. You're being diplomatic. You are a member of the party. You have been in the ex core of the party before. If there be any reconciliatory moves, I'm sure you would be in the know and you would be able to boldly tell me that, yes, we are calling everybody to the table. This is what and what we've done. But you seem to be invading the question. I'm wondering why. No, no, Miriam, you, you must get me, you must ask me the questions within context. I have I've left the position of party chairman. I was transiting at some point, and now there is a substantive chairman, and um, he's running the show independently, and at my, my time, yes, there were the constitutory um, um, uh, committees here and there, national, states, and at other levels, you know, and that I can speak to. Um, today, um, if Chief Emeka, Chief Emeka Bikin, you put him as coming out to say that the person should be reconciled to the party and all of that, various levels. And that is what it is. What the chairman has told you is what it is. But when it comes to the issue of level playing field, it's a policy of the party. And I'm saying that I stand by that policy, and that is the policy of the party I inherited and what I left behind. It has not changed. Okay, interesting. I think we so have. I cannot authoritatively respond to, to I know that Chief Emeka Weke, state party chairman of the party of APC in River State, has uh, set up a few committees uh, so far that are uh, in the public space. I, I know of the finance committee, I know of the reconciliation committee, I suppose. Uh, also, uh, I know of some two or three committees that they have set up recently, okay. other in the pipeline. So as okay. they unfold and they give and, and they are available in the public space, we will all see and know. All right, I have Golden Choma joining me, so let me throw the question to Mr. Choma. Mr. Choma, can you hear me? Great. Um, I asked the, the, uh, Obobola the same question. I'm going to ask you. Um, since Mr. Mekka is saying that there is now a level playing field for all and everybody who wants to aspire for anything is allowed to, um, so may the best man win. But I'm asking, I'm most in, um, you know, interested in the reconciliatory moves that he has made mention of. Now, I know that you have been on the other side of the divide for a while asking for a level playing field for fairness uh, in the game. Have you had any handshake across the table? Have you been called in for conversations? Have you agreed on a way forward? Uh, I hope I can hear you right. You are saying that they can be said the party that has the level playing field for everybody. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, um, that's very wrong. That is very untrue. You cannot say that. For obvious reasons, it's standing on the very faulty foundation. His foundation is wrong. When a man uses the house of the stand, the house cannot stand. And when you when you put up of very high fixed oppression of others, you cannot give the only branch because you put up of high handedness. If he was saying that there should be some reconciliation, then I will now ask who is speaking. He doesn't have the power to call for reconciliation because there is no quarrel with him and anybody. Nobody is quarreling with the maker. But he's the, he, but he's leading the party, the party in the state, isn't he? The he, isn't he leading the um, party in the states? Doesn't he have a right to say, well, if this party must move on? Let's all meet each other halfway. Can't he do that? Whether he was, whether he had a problem with anybody or not. Yes, um, I hope I'm hearing you rightly. But if I can hear you rightly, he doesn't have the power to make such statements. The party is disunited because of the attitude and the modus operandi of the Minister for Transportation. The maker has no problems with anybody. Nobody has any one with him. We have a problem with the Minister of Transportation whose model is very faulty. 
if he decides to correct himself and come to the negotiating table, then everything will be okay. He doesn't lie in the mouth of Rebecca to call for that. Are you saying that you want um, Honorable, uh, the former governor, uh, Chibike Amechi, to come to the table with your faction of the party and that all will be well? I mean, whether Emeka Beke is there or not, you're saying that your grouse is with the Honorable Minister of Transportation. Is that what it is? And if I may ask, what exactly did he do that has made your faction uh, continuously disagree with what's happening in the party? Can you, can you come again? I think I'm what so exactly sorry. has the transportation minister done so bad that he, he has to be the one coming uh, to stretch a hand of friendship before you can give a nod to the reconciliatory moves that Emeka Beke is talking yes. about? Um, what I'm saying is, it's not possible for Emeka to call for what he wants, what he's calling for. Because he doesn't have the powers to do them. What I'm saying is, we are members of the APC. The APC, as it is currently, has two factions. So if he says anything, he will be the confines of the faction he leads. That's all. But if we're talking of APC as a party, as a united party, we need to be fair to ourselves. The problem of the party in the state is with the minister. We need everybody to understand that. We don't have any problem with the maker whatsoever. We only say that the party has two factions. How do we reconcile the party and move out, move along a united group? That is what should concern everybody. But that's what a maker Beke is offering. Let's form a formidable force against the ruling party, which is the he PDP. Cannot, excuse me, he cannot offer that. He's not within the confines to so do. So what must, the, what must the Minister of Transportation do, sir, that would make and you realize yes. that the there is... I'm saying, uh, what I'm saying here is, is a simple issue. And I want you to understand this. A nigga has made statements credited to him. So be it. But he has only made those statements as regards the party he leads, the faction he leads. We don't have a problem with that. But if you are asking, how can the party in the state be a united party, then I will join the issues with it. He doesn't lie in his mouth to talk to them or to them. No. Hmm. He knows that. Okay, let me let me go back to um, Mr. Bobola because uh, I'm yet to really understand what's at the heart of this issue. Um, yes. Mr. Beke again had said that um, he'll engage the Magnus Abbe group um, and supporters of Senator Magnus Abbe and keep them within party activities. Uh, he said that you know he's going to do whatever it takes to address the, you know, the issue. And I'm going to, I'll, I'll ask the same question to Mr. Chama. Maybe this would, you know, soften uh, the mood. But I'm asking, why did it take so long for Mr. Beke, who's leading the party now? Or why didn't you do it when you were leading the party to call for the Magnus Abbe faction to the table and address the issue? Even though Golden Chama is saying that it's not within your purview to do that, that it's, it's in the hands of the Honorable Minister for Transportation. But maybe you can help me out here. Okay, thank you, uh, Miriam. I must tell you, it's on record um, that we, at the time, I, I was leading the party as chairman, as the CTC chairman of the state. We had several levels of um, of uh, conversations from the national, to the regional, to the states, even up to the local levels. We had several conversations from some Meetings here and there. Golden Choma cannot deny several meetings at Elms. Some in Chief Judge's house, some in other places among that. Several. And he, he was in attendance at that time. But um, as I you keep mentioning Senator Magnus Abbey, and, and I'm not sure he's still a member of the party because. Well, I, mean, I, I, I have spoken to the Senator many times, even recently. He says 
Nobody can, can move, remove him from the party, and he's still an APC member until he says different. So I do not know where you're getting your information as to and I'm him not you, being you, a member of the party. Me, you, you, uh, Miriam, you can't say where I'm getting my information from. I am just the immediate past chairman of the party, and his name is not in our register. So you don't tell me you don't know where I'm getting the information from. Hmm. I was in custody of the registers of the party as of a few months ago. If he registered yesterday, if he revalidated his membership yesterday, also I would not do. But as at the time of my death, he was not a member of the party. So if the senator is not a member of your party, why is the leader of your party in the state right now saying that he wants to reconcile his faction? How does an outsider in your party have a faction? So that's, that's why I'm saying that. First, I'm not a spokesman for Chipemeka Beke and uh, the APC chairman today. Um, I, I can only speak to what I knew before now. And if it has changed, it has gone to Minister, no problem. But in, in any event, what a political party is there for is to bring in new members and it continue to even those who have left or those who are either here or there, is to make sure that they bring them to their fools, even go poaching and all of that. So in discussing with the Magno Sape um, and all those who are currently not members of the party, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. They were previously members of the party, they were aggrieved at some point, and we kept talking and all of that. They did not participate in activities, activities that were fixed and set and carried out by the national party, if they're members of the same party and all that. And we still call them members. Uh, well, if, if they are registered, they are fine. But if Chief Emeka BK is part of this program to bring everything together, whether you're a member or not, and all that, it's, it's okay. It's, uh, it's fine by me. I don't have a problem. You, you seem to not be uh, okay with this idea. Do you have a personal grasp with the former senator? I don't know, no personal grasp because we've been talking like friends and colleagues. I'm a lawyer like himself and all that. We've been talking over the period and we, we, we kept talking about I kept encouraging him to participate in party activities, but he refused. With his people, some of the persons who are still following him, and what's the, my my job is to try to persuade people. If you don't agree, so be it. But as I speak okay. to you, the fact remains the fact that as at the time I left the party, the the uh, the hems of the affairs of the party in the state, I did not see his name in any okay. of our. Uh, I'll throw the question to Mr. Choma. Uh, Mr. Choma, I'm sure you heard everything that uh, Mr. Bobula is saying. He's saying that the senator uh, Magnus Abe is not a member of the APC to the best of his knowledge. Even though Emeka Beke is asking, uh, talking about the fact that he wants to reconcile with members of the faction of the senator. And, and he's also saying that, well, he doesn't have a personal grouse with the senator. But I'd like to hear from you. Did Senator Magnus Abbey officially declare that he's no longer a member of the APC? Well, um, Mr. Obobola is saying that, um, to the best of his knowledge, he does not know if Senator Magnus Abbey is still a member of the APC. <laughs> That's very laughable. The distinguished senator is a member of the All Progressive Congress, and a very resounding member of that. The issue here is simple: that they are playing politics of exclusion. He is a member of the party, recognized by all and sundry, including them. Just the fact that they are refused to be cowed. That is the only reason why uh, my friend Obogula was making those statements. I, I would have been happier if a maker of the case was making those statements. Obogula has gone. He's a uh, senior and ended or whatever it is worth. I, I don't want to join issues with him, but for two reasons. He is not saying the truth. He knows the distinguished minister is a member but he of says the says that, But he so says that he had access. He, he, he said he had access to... I'm sorry, Mr. Chalmers. Sorry, hang on. The reconciliation committee hang, on hang on, Mr. Chalmers. He said he, does, yes. he did have access to the register of the party in the state, and the senator's, num um, senator's name is not in the party's register in the state. This is what he said on live television. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, the party is aware 
that certain members were excluded from being re-registered when the registration was going on. And when the national executive saw that as a ploy for the minister and his uh, group to deny us membership, they quickly wrote a letter that all members of the APC of River State who are still members of the party, devised of the fact that haven't been revalidated as still members, and that they could still buy from a contest election. Hmm. And everybody is aware of it. So that is not the issue. And the same national executive, within that same week, appointed the civil senator Magnus Abe and the civil senator Aki as members of the national committee of the party. The civil senator Magnus Abe was appointed as secretary of the legal committee, while senator Aki was appointed as a member of the uh, South South uh, Zona Committee. So that has nothing to be too. Okay. So what he is saying is that again or that. Okay. The party is aware that all they did is of no value. Well, unfortunately, uh, I, I, we were out of time. I would have loved to ask where this is all going to lead because, of course, um, if the leader of the the leader of the party in the state is saying, "Let's come to the table," and and then we're still having divergence of opinions. I do not know if the APC is ready for 2023, but I want to say thank you, Mr. Isaac Obobula. I want to say thank you, Mr. Golden Chama. Thank you all for being part of this conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you. It's my pleasure. All right. Well, we'll take a short break now. When we come back quickly, I will give you my take. Here's my take. Now, as we move towards the 2023 general elections, I urge Nigerians to choose their leaders wisely in all the elections in order for us to put an end to this unending suffering that the average Nigerian has been subjected to over the years. Because the suffering being inflicted on Nigerians can only come to an end if the right set of leaders are elected. So, things are not working in the country. We're all complaining. And the mandate to bring the required change lies with us. Our economy is at its lowest ebb. There is serious insecurity in the country. And this administration can no longer guarantee the security of lives and property in the country. Now, we can't keep waiting on a savior or a messiah that will come and save us all. We can't keep hoping that our political class will suddenly turn a new leaf and start prioritizing us or our needs or, or our push for accountability and good governance or for open budgets and the protection of lives and property. So, as Democrats, which I think we are, I ask that all Nigerians get their PVCs if they are of voting age. Avoid money politics. It is pertinent that we get it right this time in choosing our leaders because it is crucial. It's a crucial period in the time of Nigeria's lives because we cannot continue this way. When choosing your leaders in 2023, as patriotic Nigerians, we must ensure that the people we vote into power are highly cerebral, very educated, selfless, and forthright. We need a patriot who has the, able, the capability you know, to govern. We deserve a diligent Nigerian with the quality of a world-class president because we deserve it. He must be honest, he must be transparent, he must be credible. This is the kind of leader that you should vote for. So don't sell your vote. Well, that's the size of our show tonight. I want to leave you with the fact that Nigerians are talking about the third force and if they'll be able to unseat the APC or the PDP. I am Mary Anakon, thanking you for watching. I didn't think any third party can conquer APC or PDP in this Nigeria, this century we are. I didn't know maybe in the future, but now to you, like 10 years to this time, it can't. Yeah. Because APC and PDP, like, I didn't know what really happened, but people like our mentality people for APC and PDP, we believe that they are the only person that can do it. But let's just try to another party. Maybe we can see the difference in this country. The issue is that before a thought force takes up that job or takes up the takes out um, APC and PDP, uh, 
it would have been maybe for next uh, uh, coming election, but not for now because for me they are not prepared yet. You understand? So before you take it, what you would have built a structure. APC and PDP is, is taking over because they've already established a structure all over the countries and even at the at least the local levels. The you know, grassroots structure is very important. I don't think so. You know, since they are the ruling party, and you know Nigeria now, before you can kick away a ruling party, it's always a very serious something. Except if they would bring a, how will I say it, a good candidate from other parties, they can have chance. But mm, as it stands now, I don't think... It is possible if we can pray one and be united and know the plan and the vision of this third party, then we will fight and make it possible. I didn't think any third party can conquer APC or PDP in this Nigeria, this century. Yeah. I didn't know maybe in the future, but now.